In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to properly uninstall HackGCE from your Sega Genesis mini console. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, guys, so before we get into this, I do want to clear the air. There is some rumors going around on Reddit about how the developers for HackG intentionally sabotaged the uninstallation process to prevent you from installing Project Lunar. Now, after talking to some people who are on both sides of the equation, I can tell you from my personal opinion, I do not believe it was intentional. I think it was just an oversight, and because of that, the team at HackG had gone ahead and made a fix. So anybody who does want to go back from HackG to Project Lunar can do so, and this video is gonna specifically show you guys how to do that. Now, that being said, I believe that we've got the developers on both sides of the equation trying to fix this so that way it doesn't really matter which way you're going or coming from you'll be able to install whatever mod you want on your console so that's the most important thing so with all of that out of the way let's get hack GCE 3.7 completely uninstalled from our Genesis mini so it is ready to install whatever mod you guys want to put on it the first thing that we need to do is make sure that our Sega Genesis Mini is turned on and connected via USB to our computer. Mine is already there. Next, we need to make sure that we open up our HackGCE software. And as you can see, it's now loading up. It's going to check the database for all the games. All right, perfect. So now we've got our HackGC up and running. What we're gonna need to do is we need to go over to the kernel section and we need to click uninstall. What this is going to do is it's going to completely uninstall everything with the exception of that one file that didn't get removed. And we're gonna have to remove that file manually, but we must uninstall the mod first. One thing that I'm going to recommend is if you did export to USB, for your build and you're running all of your games off of a USB, I would simply take the USB out of the console and set it aside because if you ever decide to rehack your console, you can pop that USB drive in and it will work. So that will just save you some time in the future if you decide to come back to HackG. But again, we're just gonna go ahead and hit the uninstall button and it's going to ask, do we really want to remove all traces of HackG2 and return your mini to its original state? Now we know it's not going to be original because there is one file that doesn't get removed, but we're going to go ahead and say yes. It's going to go ahead and run through the process. It's going to restart the console and it's going to uninstall the hack. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to fast forward through this process. So as you can see now, it says done. If everything went well, your mini should be back to running the stock kernel. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And as you can see, all of our games are still here and that's totally fine. On our console itself, we should be back to the stock software with the exception of that one hidden file. So in order to fix that, we actually have to download this file right here and it's called fix underscore root fs underscore ro dot hmod. And I'm gonna leave the link to this in the description down below so you guys can go ahead and download it. I'm gonna click on this and drag it into our main HackG screen. It's going to load it up as a module that needs to be installed and we just need to scroll down and find it. It's gonna be all the way towards the bottom under the unknown section. We're gonna check mark this, we're gonna hit okay, and it's going to go ahead and install this mod. Now it's going to ask us to set our Genesis into FEL mode, and it's got the instructions on screen. We need to remove the USB cable, we need to turn the power switch to the on position, while holding the reset button, we need to plug the cable back in, and then it will automatically install. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quickly right now. So now that I've done that, we are automatically uploading the corrected kernel. And once it's finished, it's going to reboot the console and we're actually going to get an error. But until that point, I'm gonna fast forward. So this is the error that I was talking about. It says an existing connection was forcibly closed by the remote host. And the reason why that popped up is because when you typically install an HMOD, you usually don't have the system rebooting and it's not normal behavior for it. So the fact that the console did reboot indicated an error to the software. That being said, there is no actual error. This is completely normal and we are actually good. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now that we've done that, our console is completely reflashed. The remaining file that was left there that blocks Project Lunar has been removed and we are good to go ahead and install whatever mod we want on our console. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and close off Hackchi, but to show you guys that it does work, I am going to quickly install Project Lunar onto my device again. So I'm just gonna drag Project Lunar over here. I'm gonna open it up and I'm going to install Project Lunar. Now we're gonna get the no console detected. Do you wish to start the Project Lunar install process? The answer of course is yes. It's going to ask me to put my console into FEL mode, which I'm going to do really quickly right now, but I am gonna fast forward through the entire installation process. All right guys, so as you can see, we've got install complete. It's labeled right over here. We can go ahead and hit finish and we're good to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my Sega Genesis mini console so you guys can actually see that the mod has actually gone onto the console and it is functioning properly. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over now. All right, so here we are on our Genesis mini. As you guys can see, Project Lunar is back up and running. So if we jump over to Emulation Station, it will work. Now I had my previous build uh, on a USB drive, so I, all I had to do was just bring that over, pop it in, and it worked. Now obviously if you haven't done any of the mods for Emulation Station or anything like that, you'll need to do that, otherwise this will not work. But I did wanna show you guys everything is working as normal, and I'm gonna go ahead and back out of here and just jump into Project Lunar really quick. And we're gonna choose Project Lunar, we're gonna select English, and here we are. So as you guys can see, we do have all of the uh, stock games on here. Now I don't have any additional games loaded up just yet, um, but it does work and everything is functioning the way it should. So we are pretty well good to go in this sense. If there is any questions that you guys have about this, please let me know in the comment section below. I do want to give a big shout out to the team at Hackchi because as soon as they realized that there was an issue, there was a bunch of guys on the team that worked really hard to get a fix out. So this is a temporary fix. I know, like I said, both teams are going to be working at implementing a proper correction. So that way you don't have to go through that extra step of loading that H mod. But it is greatly appreciated, especially for us, the end users, to know that we have the flexibility to do whatever we want and there isn't any real repercussions of going with either mod so other than that i don't have much else for you thank you so very much for watching be sure to subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up and i will talk to you guys again real soon